Crude oil has had its best week since April, but what about the longer term? Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Elena Casas. Oil prices have been in the doldrums in recent weeks, with Brent slipping below $70 a barrel. The Federal Reserve's 50 basis point rate cut this week has been a shot in the arm. The price has recovered somewhat in the last couple of days, with Brent hovering around $74.40 now, but demand forecasts for 2025 remain lukewarm. Well, to find out why, I'm joined now by Victor Katona, lead crude analyst at Kepler. Victor, hi. Low demand from top consumer China has been blamed for the low oil price this year, and markets look poised for that to stay weak into 2025. But do you think it will recover? Well, I think the sentiment will recover, but on different grounds. Because up until now, uh, pretty much every single uh, cycle that we had in the oil markets had the idea that at some point demand would be higher. I think we're nearing the stage when we just need to adapt, need to effectively just acknowledge the fact that oil demand peak might be actually quite close to where we stand right now. And then the price movements and effectively, you know, the supply and demand dynamics would be completely different. They would be driven by how much the oil industry invests into oil in the long term, but it would not be led by demand. And I think a lot of the disappointment that we see in the markets right now, you know, the disappointment with China is very much driven by the understanding that we no longer have a good demand growth story. It's just, you know, demand depression pretty much everywhere. Do you think oil traders have been overly bearish then? Absolutely. I mean, if you just look at how the positioning, especially, uh, you know, the, the, the algorithmic uh, funds who are often blamed for, uh, you know, the price volatility that we have seen, pretty much everyone is just in the same boat and the boat is just too crowded. You, everyone cannot be this bearish at the same time. Someone needs to get out and, you know, just bet against the market. I think a technical correction uh, is already happening. Partly, the, the the uptick that we have seen this week uh, is also the fact that people start to realize that they have been too bearish. And I think we have a little bit of an upside in oil prices still. So 75 for Brent over the upcoming weeks, I say yes, it's long overdue because you, the market just cannot be this, this negative even before things have happened. 25 is the bad year. So why are you getting too depressed about 24 already? Why is 25 the bad year? I think 25 is, is the year when everything comes together. Uh, you have a tremendous amount of non-OPEC supply coming into the markets. Uh, countries that have underperformed 2024, Brazil, uh, massively into the markets. Canada, huge increments. The US is still growing. Uh, Guyana will be growing too. And if you add the oversupply that's coming from the non-OPEC markets with a weakening demand outlook, you know, it, it just fits the jigsaw puzzle of effectively a mediocre, lukewarm year. Uh, it, it all comes together. But again, we need to wait for this to happen. A lot of the, the you know, the, a lot of the negative sentiment is the anticipation of things getting worse. But things aren't looking that bad now in September of 2024. Maybe in September 25, it's going to be a completely different picture. But right now, the physical markets are in backwardation. The backwardation is steepening. Someone needs to notice. There is, of course, a greater risk of widening conflict in the Middle East every day and of all-out war between Israel and Hezbollah. The IDF this Friday carried out a bomb attack in Beirut that killed a senior Hezbollah commander. Do you think that will have any impact on the price? Well, it should, because for most of uh, 2024, there was an inbuilt geopolitical risk premium in the oil prices, which just completely disappeared by now. And I think at least some of the, you know, some of the acknowledgement that things are actually pretty tense. Uh, you know, we have a conflict in Ukraine, we have a conflict in the Middle East, and that is impacting how the market feels about, about the future. Why, don't, why, don't, why, do, why doesn't the oil market reflect that in, in its anticipation for the oil prices? I think the oil market just doesn't trust any, any old story. Ukraine is an old story. By now, even the, 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 the Israel-Lebanon or, or Israel-Gaza story is an old story. Uh, you know, it, there's nothing can excite the, the oil, market, uh, oil markets any longer, maybe apart from a new conflict. I think that could shake up things quite massively. 
The overarching concern, I suppose, as you mentioned earlier, is that the IEA in its forecast could be right when it said that peak oil demand could arrive next year. What will that mean for the markets? Well, if that happens, which I don't necessarily think that, that would happen, I think it happens somewhere around 28 and 29. So we still have a couple of years where we still grow. And that's maybe the bias in me saying that. But if that happens, I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of disappointment and investors leaving the oil market as a commodity in where, in, into which they can bet because they know that the market would be growing. So it would be a stagnant market with uh, a couple of years of oversupply. And I think it would be very tepid um, how it feels, how oil is traded, how it's even perceived. Um, and I think you know the metals would become the future. Copper would be what everyone tries to invest into, what all, every single retail investor looks out for and reads the, you know, uh, the, the daily news about. Oil will just become you know just a regular commodity as all the previous commodities have become, very much like coal is a regular commodity by now, but say 50 years ago, it, it pretty much dictated everything that was, uh, that was happening around us. So we just effectively need to acknowledge uh, the era of oil will end, and most probably it will happen over the next 10 to 15 years. Thank you so much, Victor Katona of Kepler. And that's your Market Insight. Don't forget, you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.